Hey guys, well, today I'm back here at uh, Jerome Township Cemetery and uh, I got a pretty, pretty good one here. Uh, this headstone is an absolute mess. Back sometime in the 60s and 70s, it was very popular to uh, drill holes into stones, put these inserts in, um, run this metal banding around it to try to keep it together. And then you use some kind of uh, goo that uh, didn't hold on to anything. And uh, so what we've got now is we've got this mess that's uh, still held together by this banding. And uh, as you can see, the epoxy they used didn't hold. Um, they poured this, the base of this, into concrete again. Um, so obviously it's probably broken below this also. Uh, so I've already started on this. I took a hacksaw and cut these metal bands, so hopefully I can carefully flip this over. These are uh, machine screws, basically, that go through. There's a washer on the front and the back, and the, the steel bands run up the back. And there's a nut that holds everything together on the back side. So I'm going to carefully flip this over, um, and then I'm going to try to get those nuts off. I'm hoping that they'll come off easy. Uh, the only other option I really have is to try to cut them off uh, or, or get a battery powered grinder to grind these off and, and I don't want to do that so uh, I'm going to try this, hopefully it works, I think it will and uh, I'm going to start cleaning and get this thing ready to go back together. So, let's get started on that. Okay so I was able to get this flipped over all together uh, wasn't really that hard um, I did dig around the top a little bit just so I could get my hands underneath it and it flopped right over and uh, while I was digging I actually hit an old jar right here <laughs> so I don't know if somebody uh, came out and buried a it's a, actually a really old embossed jar I did not dig it up but uh, I did find some pieces of it um, that looked quite old so uh, now the the next step is trying to get this banding off get these pieces separate so that they can be cleaned and inspected uh, find out you know what needs to happen to them uh, so that they can be put back together plus I've still got banding on the base that needs to come off um, and you know time and weather does things to to iron bolts uh, they're not going to come off easy, so we're going to try our best. I've got a pair of vice grips in the truck I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, the other thing I could try is possibly running my hacksaw across there uh, to cut them off. So we're going to try a couple of different things, see what works, and uh, see what doesn't, and hopefully we can get this apart. This is the epitome of someone with good intentions not knowing what they're doing uh, which I guess hand in, goes hand in hand with a sign of the times they they really didn't have any other option so um, we're gonna try our best with it I think we'll be able to do pretty good though okay well this hasn't been going too bad I suppose um, what has worked well, so far is actually uh, holding this side with a screwdriver, and then uh, I had a pair of chan. I didn't actually uh, have my vice grips in the truck, but um, holding the nut and spinning the nut while I hold the screw with the screwdriver, and uh, surprisingly. They're coming off. I had one that loosened up a long ways and then decided to stop moving. So I had to cut it the rest of the way with the hacksaw. But uh, yeah, see that? And we can move that to the side. 
And uh, got one more here. This one's probably going to do the same thing. I'm going to end up having to cut it off. They used like some kind of, it's still flexible. It's like caulk. Really weird. Not a, not a good choice. And uh, I'm hoping that it wasn't detrimental to the stone because the stone has started to deteriorate a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna get it cleaned up. See what we can do for it. I'm sure we'll be able to stick it back together and. Uh, And get these holes filled in get all these gaps filled in and get it looking like it's supposed to okay so now that we got all the banding off of the stone uh, what we've got here is we've got these two pieces of banding that apparently was supposed to anchor this thing down to this concrete that they poured <clears throat> and uh, these screws here, I believe, probably just have what I would consider to be drywall inserts, or maybe they're uh, plastic concrete insert. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, similar to what they had all along the edge of the stone, and then they just drilled all the way through this stone and bolted through it. Um, so I've got one more here and one more here that need to be removed. All right, well, I got those bolts out of the uh, stone here I've just got these ones that I need to pull out and uh, then we'll be ready to start washing this thing down these uh, hopefully will yeah they're gonna come out pretty easy I think they've just got a, uh, a plastic insert in there may not even they might be lead I guess but um, the rest of them have all been plastic around the rest of the stone so this stone is uh, an absolute mess it uh, it's not gonna be easy to put back together at all and even once it's back together um, there are large chunks that are missing it's going to take a lot of infill material and uh, not to mention all these holes need to be filled. Um, there's going to be some rust spots that need to be removed off of it. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really something. This will be a, a first for me. But we're going to attack it one little bit at a time. And uh, hopefully we can put it back together. What I really would like to do is I'd like to remove the piece, the bottom piece of this stone from this concrete, pour a new base. But it, uh, I don't believe it's in that bad of shape. Yeah, see those are plastic inserts. And whether or not I'll be able to get them out, I don't know. I might have to put these screws back in there a little ways and see if I can pull them out. I was able to work the rest of them out of the uh, stone, but I might have to bring my drill over sometime and drill those out and cover over them with some mortar. So, Okay, so we've got all the hardware. <laughs> removed from the stone. Now uh, we're gonna do a initial cleaning with Orvis soap and water, and then we're gonna treat it with D2. In a couple of days, we'll come and take a look at it and see what it looks like, and hopefully we can uh, start putting it back together. Probably is gonna be three or four days of putting this back together because uh, I'm probably only gonna do maybe two pieces at a time it's five pieces right now. There's four pieces that are separate from this piece here. 
So uh, maybe I'll set these first two, let them cure up, then set this one, and then set the top one. So let's start cleaning it. Okay, this is just a uh, typical mix up some uh, water and some Orvis soap and take a breath to it. Like you've seen me do so many times before. Let's see how much of this stuff will come off. There's a little bit of uh, that epoxy that they use, or whatever they used. Maybe it was liquid nail, who knows. This may, this original repair may have been done in the 80s. Could have been done in the 90s, I guess. A little bit of initial cleanup work to be done on this bottom piece as far as leftover mortar they actually used mortar on this joint and there is some leftover mortar on there so I'll have to get the chisel and chisel that little bit of mortar off Okay, so we got that clean. We're gonna rinse it off real fast. And then we'll start cleaning these pieces back here individually. Just gonna pour a little bit of solution on there. Luckily, when they did that repair, they used galvanized banding, so it's really not leaving a whole lot of rust on the stone up the back where they had the banding at anyway. I think with a little bit of TLC, this uh, stone will be looking really nice. And I don't really see a whole lot of uh, advanced deterioration on this stone. It's actually, uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Other than uh, the damage that was caused by the repair that's the thing is they tried to do good by this stone and repair it but the repair actually caused more damage to the stone than what needed to be done now I will say this like I said before um, you know it may have been their only option at the time but uh, I'm just glad that it didn't do irreparable damage to this stone. I don't really know what's going on here as far as all these holes in here. Could be part of the design. This looks like a pair of angel's wings. Once we get this thing cleaned up good we'll uh, be able to tell a little better maybe.
this here. Put it up on this wood. And uh, hopefully we can get it clean to the point where we can start putting it back together in a couple of days. over here on this wood here and uh, I flipped it over so I can rinse the back off get all that orvis soap off there looking good now we'll just uh, spray it with some D2 and we'll be good to go okay guys been a couple of days since we uh, took this stone apart and uh, got it cleaned up and uh, we're gonna start seeing about sticking it back together now um, I'm gonna clean up the joints get the uh, epoxy mixed up and start clamping this thing up and uh, hopefully it goes together nicely and we can get some more cleaning done on up over the next couple of weeks and uh, finish up the infill before fall sets in. So I'm gonna get my brush, start cleaning stuff up, and uh, then we'll start clamping the boards up and, and get this thing put back together. Okay, so now that we've got everything brushed down, all the loose stuff removed from all the joints, we can uh, get ready to start putting these pieces back together. Now, this, uh, this headstone is unique in that it's got a, uh, it doesn't have a flat face. So, I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative with how I clamp things together on this one. But uh, we're gonna work through it and see what we can accomplish here. Get this epoxy mixed up. And uh, we're gonna start with uh, this piece that goes right here. And we'll work off of that. Should go pretty well, I think. I'm gonna get a good amount of epoxy mixed up here because this is gonna take a lot. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, five joints, six joints. So this stuff has got a, a pretty good play time. I should be able to still uh, be applying this in, in half hour, 45 minutes, so I'm not real concerned about it setting up on me. It's, uh, it's probably 80 degrees today, but I'm in the shade. It's somewhat humid, that all plays a part, so. Okay, so our first piece is gonna be this one here. on here. I did uh, mock this up the other day and 
there's a lot of uh, good contact points here so this uh, this stone believe it or not should go together very nicely And this epoxy I'm using is going to be a thousand times better than the uh, mortar that they used years ago to put this stone together. Just want to make sure that I'm Probably going to have to do quite a bit of adjusting on this. So. Probably going to have to go get my other clamp out of the truck too. So I have enough clamps. We'll see when we get there. I really like these clamps because you don't need an extra hand to, uh, to operate them. got this little piece here that needs to be pushed back some so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in there like that and uh, get this stake in the ground we have to uh, I think that'll do it. Oh yeah, that looks really nice now. Just that little bit of tension on there. Good deal. Okay, so we'll uh, let that set up for a couple of days. I'm gonna cover it with a garbage bag and uh, we'll come back and check on it. Put the uh, top piece on. All right, guys. Uh, it's been about a week and a half since we uh, epoxied Ruth's headstone together. Um, I came over one morning and uh, took all the clamps off, and I threw the top piece on. 
Um, it is looking much better from the treatments of D2. What I want to do today is I want to get a lot of this soiling out, or try to get a lot of this soiling out. So I've got some uh, Orvis soap mixed up where uh, I'm going to try to do some light brushing on this and try to get some of the dirt and some of the loose stuff that's still on here off. And then uh, I'll treat it with D2 again um, in the next couple of days, maybe in a, a week or so from now, I'm going to start the infill process on this. Um, it's looking a lot better. It's uh, good and strong there. It is just a little bit loose in this base, so kind of gives me some hope that maybe one day uh, this base will be able to take it, be taken off. You can see all the way around it that there is a little bit of a gap, so it's possible that the, that base could be taken off and this could be reset properly into a, uh, a new base or it's possible that the old base is still underneath there. Um, it could be reset back into the, the original base. So. I'm going to move that flag and uh, we're just going to do a quick scrub down on this and uh, hopefully start cleaning up a little bit. I believe that flag belongs to Ruth's husband here anyways so we put it on the uh, proper side of his stone over there and uh, we'll, that's where we're just going to leave it. Got about two gallons of water here and maybe a tablespoon or so of Orvis soap in my water. We're just going to Somebody on Facebook asked me if there was bullet holes in this headstone. So I don't think they're bullet holes, but <laughs> somebody did do a pretty good drill job. Less than impressive. I really don't know what all these holes are from, and I don't know if it's part of the original design. Uh, there doesn't seem to really be any kind of pattern to them, so um, I really don't know. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to try to figure out if I want to infill them and make it look a little bit better, or uh, if I just leave them the way they are. don't think that really did a whole lot for me, but anything to loosen up a little bit of that stuff, maybe, uh, maybe it'll free up a little easier now with the treatment of D2. So I'll rinse all that off and uh, spray down with D2 again. Got some pretty decent weather coming it'll have time to soak in and start working and uh, hopefully over the next week or so it'll uh, clean that stone up quite a bit more uh, at least to the point where I feel comfortable 
starting some infill work on it. So we'll see what happens. 